Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's take the conversation to Anambra State, where there was a rumored emergency rule in uh, Anambra, of course, in the, gear, the steps uh, closer to the November 6th governorship election. The Attorney General, uh, Bubaka Malami, was rumored to have made mention that there's a possibility of a state of emergency in Anambra State. Uh, the governor of the state, Willie Obiano, was in the news this morning saying President Mahmoud Buhari was not necessarily aware of those plans and that the you know, Attorney General goofed. It's, uh, it's one of the headlines that we took this morning. We're going to speak with uh, Nick Agule, he's a public affairs analyst. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much. All right. Now, of course, uh, get into it. Uh, what are your views on the rumored emergency rule in Anambra State? Are you, you know, part of those who believe it is necessary, seeing the security challenges the Southeast has been experiencing? And, of course, the election's coming soon. My reaction to the rumor is that it is a bad dream, a very bad dream for our democracy. And that dream should better not come to reality. First of all, when the Attorney General of Nigeria it speaks of the state of emergency. Which part of the constitution is he standing on? Which democracy? Should those who have been charged with responsibility or running a democracy must allow democracy to run? First of all, if the so-called state of emergency is declared and probably the elections, the forthcoming elections in Atambra, does not rule, that is a victory to club. Because that's what we want. That's what elections are So one to expect the federal government of Nigeria and the Antarctic to do everything possible to ensure the election hold. So I cannot understand why the Attorney General is speaking of a state of emergency situation that will most likely complete the fourth governorship election and hand it this way to help up. So my view is that this is a dream that better not come to reality. Yeah, well, uh, Ms. Agule, I, I'm going to play devil's advocate. What, what do you think the government should do or in what ways do you think that they can get around ensuring that people feel safe. Because in the last few weeks, I'm sure you know that, you know, people in the Southeast haven't necessarily felt very safe. We've seen killings. We've seen attacks on security agencies and INEC offices. Um, so how do you think the government can pull off a safe and secure Anambra for, um, in the build up to the elections, maybe a couple of days before, during the elections and after? Um, what resources do you think the Nigerian government can, you know, put together? It is straightforward. We have a president who is also, who is also the commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria. This president took the oath office to protect and defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that constitution has two cardinal objectives. For the president, and those are the provision of security and welfare for the citizens of Nigeria and number of states. So, what the government needs to do is to provide security in a number of states. This number of states is very small state in comparison to states in Nigeria in terms of land. So, we can't the federal government and the Anambra state government jointly cooperating with each other to provide security so that Anambra is safe and secured. This is the failure of the federal government. So let me tell you one thing. I can understand that the security architecture in Nigeria is overpriced. It's actually about when. Because if the community has spread across the country and the army is having to deal with this security with operation, this operation, that all over the country, 
The police are also crushed. But if an important event in our democratic journey, like governorship election, is upcoming in the state, Shkanamba, the federal government must deploy all available security forces to Anamba, to police Anamba, to give Anamba security so that this governorship election we hold. What is happening is a war between and the federal government, the state government. So they cannot war, war be won by support. Now, let me tell you another thing. The federal government needs to deploy intelligent security. Intelligent security is that which prevents this attack from happening. This attack will be in the board before the people strike. That is a state security. How can you be able in a state that is as small as a number fish out those who are perpetrating this evil even before they strike? And then the second thing is when they strike, they are allowed to away. How can you away in a state like a number? Where are the forces in their position? If you shoot an AK-47 rifle here, the sound is going to be heard miles away. How can the people be there? People come sporadically, sporadically to and get it. All right. Um, it seems to be a challenge uh, with the sound and the feed from the Kagule this morning. Can you still hear me clearly, Mr. Gule? I can hear you. But okay. can you hear me? Yes, I can. You know, it's not very clear, but... Okay, so let, let me end that point. The point I want to end is this. President Buhari needs to be a true commander. A commander is the one that rewards successes by his men and repeats failure. If the president sent commission police, brigade commanders, Commanders of public security agencies in every state where an attack has been perpetrated and it was not stopped with intelligence and it, the perpetrator, the perpetrator of the threat, they were not apprehended and arrested of them, depending on their story. The president should terminate the activities of those commanders. If the president begins to terminate, Appointments, commissioners, and commanders are going to show that they will never sleep until they ensure enough intelligence is gathered to prevent this attack. And if this attack is happen, the people will never get away. Okay. Um, also, you know, if you can briefly also share your views on um, curtailing the activities of the IPOB, not in a militarized way now. Uh, but, you know, what, what role do you think the government can also, you know, play in order to, you know, calm the IPOB down, you know, and these perpetrators of violence in the, in the Southeast? There are two things. Number one is round table. Number two is force. So, you have an insurrection like IPOB. You you do not have any of sitting down, discussing with them, hearing them out, so that you understand the agreement. And then explain to your own position. And if the agreement is a thing that you can deal with, it is better you deal with them than reacting to an armed force. So that is one thing. The federal government should and can engage and for in a round table. So that let them know that they are being helped. The citizens of Nigeria, they have grievances against the state. And the federal government is a father. Number of state government is also a father. And they should engage IPOP in a round table so that they can have this discussion to understand each other. That is one way. The second way is if I will not listen, if I will not come to the round table, 
It actually demands uh, that they want the state of the Afghan, which is not constitutionally provided. And they don't want to give to explanations that the only way to get a state of Biafra is to get a referendum into the constitution of Nigeria. And from that referendum, you can then get the state of Biafra. The federal government is forced on them. They don't want to listen to reason. The federal government should be forced on them. If the federal government cannot continue in a state like Anambra, or even in the whole state region, if the federal government can perform them and claim them, we should all be afraid. Because if an army, a whole army of a country comes against us now, it means our army can so them. So we should all be, we should all have anxiety on them. All right, um, Nika Gula, I think we would have to wrap it up here. Um, um, it wasn't entirely um, um, uh, seamless or clear, but, you know, we thank you for, you know, joining us. And, of course, I think we got, you know, a good p p part of uh, the message that you had to put across. Uh, thanks for your time, as always. Uh, truly appreciate it. And we wish you a beautiful weekend ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and um, that's where we will be wrapping up the breakfast on Plus TV Africa this morning and this week. We'll be back here again on Friday, on Monday morning, actually, to, of course, have another week of the breakfast. Uh, we wish you a very beautiful weekend ahead. And, of course, uh, my final message this morning is once again to remind everyone that elections have consequences, regardless of how you see it. And those consequences can last for either four years or eight long years. And sometimes those, those eight long years, a lot of people may not even survive. And so it's a very, very important decision uh, to be made every time that Nigerians go to the polling booths. It's a very important decision to be made every time we have conversations concerning who takes over uh, the uh, leadership of the country um, every four or every eight years, including at the state level and the local government level. Elections have consequences. Um, I personally feel very bitter, you know, you know, that there are certain people who do not care about that aspect, you know, because they feel and they know that they have certain things to gain by putting a particular person, a particular government in power. Once again, elections have consequences and those consequences could last as long as eight years. I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. See you on Monday.